Hey guys, so I wanted to talk about how you can learn Korean Sign Language. Interrupt this video with an important message. I don't mean anything mean by this, but if you've seen the ASL vs. KSL video by Astley on YouTube, forget it. There's a lot, a lot of the Korean signs are wrong, so if you have seen that, just make sure you're out of your mind. Yes, there's actually a lot of YouTube videos, but you need to search in Korean. It's Korean Sign Language catered towards Koreans, and so your sources are going to be Korean. Um, it's not that bad though. You do not need to be advanced to learn Korean Sign Language. I only consider myself upper intermediate, and I was around an upper intermediate level when I started, so I don't know how hard it will be for a beginner. It will be harder, but not impossible. I feel like it would be easier starting out as an upper beginner because you'll already know certain phrasings that you'll encounter, so there'll be a lot less that you have to look up. Like when you learn how to say Zerimun, you'll already know my name. Since sign language is catered towards deaf people, whenever you get a sign, you will get the vocabulary word on the screen. So as a beginner, you could pause, look up the word, go back, rewind the video, and rewatch that sign. You will essentially be learning two languages at once. You'll be learning the actual Korean language and you will be learning the Korean sign language. So it'll be harder but not impossible. So there are some vocabulary words that could be useful for you just because they're a little bit more difficult to look up. One of them and one of the first things you want to learn in sign language is Zihua. This is the spelling and the counting. Zihua uh, is more like the minor signs. It's like with your fingers, so like the spelling and the counting. Simunja um, is going to be the spelling. So that's the very first thing you're going to want to look up because you can't introduce yourself if you don't know how to spell your name. So Simunja is your first step. Just search that one word alone, Simunja. And then Jisuja is the counting. Munja is letter and Suja is number. So it's basically the Ji and Jihua plus letter and number. So it's easy to remember. The next is Suhua. That is the word for the Korean Sign Language. Um, a lot of people these days call it Suo, which is Suhua plus Ono, Sign Language. Suhua, aside from being used as sign language in general, it could be used for individual signs. Like when I want to know how to say a sign, I'll ask, Word, 이라는 Suhua 어떻게 하세요? How do I sign word? I don't know if that's right. I've never been corrected on how I ask that, but I get an answer, so it's correct enough to be understood, and that's all that matters. Um, so for deaf people, there's three words that I've encountered, and whichever word is used depends on the individual person. They all have their own preference for what they'd rather be called. <clears throat> the first one is 청각 장애인. 청각 is a sense of hearing. 장애 is a disability impairment or a barrier, and in is the Chinese word for a person. So Tongak Zangin is a deaf or a hearing impaired person. Literally, hearing sense impaired person. The next word is Nongin and Nonga. Um, you can remove like the in on those and put them in front of other words like a Tongak Zange Hakyo, Nong Hakyo, Nonga Hakyo, or deaf school. So how do I learn sign language? On YouTube, you will do a search for learning sign language, which is Suhua Beogi. Or you could do Suol Beogi. You'll get results for both. Um, so first you want to look up Simunza. After you're good with spelling, then you want to look up Suhua Beogi and scroll through the videos and you want to pick ones that say Insa. You want beginner level introductory type phrases at first. And as you watch those videos, of course, YouTube's going to start suggesting you similar videos. So just keep watching and learning. Um, there's only one bilingual source that I know of that I've encountered, which is KSL Deaf. He has friends in other countries, so he actually has more than just Korean Sign Language on his channel, but his videos do have English captioning, making him the only bilingual source that I know of. So there's actually chats on Kakao too. You can Search for Suhua or Suol, and you can add tags like Kongbu or Beugi, 
and you'll find there's not a lot of chats but there are chats and you will find some this is probably easier to do as an intermediate just because they're going to be korean and they're going to be speaking korean so it'll be less stressful i would say try it out because some beginners are perfectly fine going back and forth with a translator they don't care others are stressed out by that if it stresses you leave the chat so it's not tempting to go into it if you have stress associated with learning Korean Sign Language, you're not going to learn it because you're just going to be so stressed out and overwhelmed and that is not good. I have a chat too on Kakao. I'll put that in the description. I currently have it coded. I might uncode it for a little while and see how that goes. I, I don't know. Um, but if I do recode it, I'll use the same code so you may or may not need the code. Um, my chat is mostly full of Korean students, so you could use English too. Um, there's a couple of Koreans in there that are just interested in sign language. Right now we do have a deaf Korean in there, so if you ask questions you might be able to get some answers, if, depending on if he's still there when you join and how busy he is around that time. But I hope this video kind of helps you. I hope it doesn't discourage you in any way. Um, I find it a lot of fun. It can be difficult at times. I mean, you're basically learning a foreign language with a foreign language, and that's not easy to do, but it makes it that much more exciting and proud when you do get it. But happy studying all. Bye.